He's been shot six times. Halloweenies. He's been burned alive. Halloweenies. He's lost his head. Halloweenies. Michael Myers can't and won't be stopped, which is why he returns this October. In anticipation, the Consequence Podcast Network presents Halloweenies, a limited series that carves out one Halloween movie a month, leading all the way up to the October 19th release of David Gordon Green and Danny McBride's new movie. You'll get tricks. You'll get treats. You'll get Michael. Tune in for the night we came home. Consequence Podcast Network. Welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with an audio interview series presented by WFPK Independent Louisville Consequence of Sound and the Consequence Podcast Network. Wherever you're listening from today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button right now to keep up with these interviews. And please do leave a rating and a review as well. I'm Kyle Meredith. Today, my guest is Jenny Lewis. We get to talk about her new music and what news I can get out of her about the upcoming album. We'll also talk about her side band, Nice as Fuck, how Rilo Kylie exists in an alternate universe, and uh, Rilo Kylie's song Portions for Foxes making the 100 greatest songs of the century so far. There's also news on an acid tongue documentary, some discussion about Gary Shandling, Van Halen, and aging as well. There's actually a lot going on in this interview. It's a lot of fun. It's Kyle Meredith with Jenny Lewis. So I'm going to close my eyes mm -hmm. while we talk. Okay. So I can pretend we're on the radio. I can pretend we're on the radio and we're on the phone. Because you I'm prefer doing interviews on the phone. You know what? It's this paper right here. And I figured this out, by the way. It must be... Um, it must be a manners type of thing because I feel like when I'm talking with someone, I need to make the eye contact and all that. And when I'm in person, I can't uh, look at my paper as much as I like Don't to. Don't worry about it. My eyes are closed. <laughs> Your eyes are closed. All right. Well, anyway, so last time you were here, uh, we were, we were, there, was a, there was an after party. Uh, Kevin Ratterman works with My Morning Jacket a lot. Yeah. And I saw you, but you were wearing a horse head mask. And that's... Uh, I was? You were wearing a horse head mask. That can't be the first time you've done that. You look so natural doing it. I don't know what it, you're so. saying. But I'm not into that sort of thing. But I, I don't recall. I, I do recall doing a duet uh -huh. with the dude from Cage the Elephant. Matthew. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you remember that? I don't remember. Because they must were sort of spontaneous. Yeah, they kept it re like um, going the whole time. Yeah, yeah. and so uh, Jim was also there. Jim James uh -huh. playing saxophone for a long time. He ripped the sax. Ripped it for like, I had, that was like a 30-minute solo. Yeah. And then Matt and I sang a song that he wrote. This that was a legendary night. It's it's all recorded apparently. Every what? every time they've done oh, that. That's right. They have a the, yeah, it was all recorded. But I don't remember the horse <laughs> mask. <laughs> there was just yeah, it was it was a horse. I don't know the story of it when I walked in cuz you and I had done an, a quick interview beforehand and I walked in and I was like, "Oh, cuz of the outfit you were or whatever." It was like there's Jenny Lewis now in a uh, yeah. horse mask, whatever. I was probably sipping that uh, reposados. <laughs> These are the days of our lives. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite soap. Is that, is that the one? That was the one, mm. like on and off, where, where you'd come in five years later, it's like right. the same thing is going on, the same story. Same I remember characters. getting pulled into All My Children when I was like 12. I would watch like Gary Shandling, Tracy Ullman, All My Children. Wow, All My Children is the wild card and that That was pack. the one got sucked into it because you don't think you'll ever get sucked into a soap opera until you watch like three episodes and then you're in then you're in did you see the gary shandling documentary first part so good so I'm, i haven't done the second part yet so i don't know how it ends <laughs> you know <laughs> spoiler alert <laughs> spoiler alert no He's no the dead. first part was fantastic it was yeah oh man so uh really inspiring the mentor part of it, I don't know if you've gotten there yet, but he's like mm -hmm. always like mentored other comics and well, especially coming from you know the Apatow eyes, you know the voice, the narrative of it, you kind of get that from the beginning. So, but yeah. Apatow's so grateful oh, and yeah. reverent, and it's so nice to see that relationship when it works, right? Because when it doesn't work, it's like the master, the movie. Uh huh. Um, but that also works. Yeah. But that's such like an interesting dynamic: the mentor and the mentee, it's and the, the mentee often or always surpasses the mentor yeah well i was gonna say it's just nice that somebody's waving the flag the uh the gary shandling flag you know it's i don't know that the i don't know you know i mean somebody had to make that i don't know that it would have been made if it hadn't been for Apatow, he so. defined that kind of style of tv comedy show oh yeah right it's like responsible yeah. for 
Did you office. have it? I, I, I'm so, totally asking the LA question here. Did you have? Did, did you know him at all? Was there any run-ins in your careers? No, but yeah. I think Ryan Adams uh-huh. was friends with him, mm-hmm. and maybe he even like jammed at Pac Sam. There's always weird <laughs> people jamming at Pac Sam, like Johnny Depp, yeah, who I've never met either. I don't get the call when the celebs are over. Not there. when that's happening. No. But you have been there. At Pac Sam. <clears throat> yes. Is that where you're working right now? Is that where you're recording? Uh, no, I did the Voyager mm-hmm. there, mm-hmm. and um, we did a little bit for that, for this record at Pax. Yeah. But then we went over to Capitol, and recorded there in Studio B. Ooh. Legendary. Studio. Legendary Capitol. Yeah. Is Ryan still a part of it, or was it just that little part there? Um, no, he's not. But. Yeah, I'm mixing with Sean Everett. Right. So Sean Everett mm-hmm. is a great mixer and producer, and he uh, recorded the War on Drugs record gotcha. and mixed it and mixed the Alabama Shakes record and really has helped me understand the album that I'm making. And it's been so many people have mentored the album, uh, and Sean is kind of like the last link in the chain to help me get it done and... Get it out there. What's 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 the issue? I mean, to to realize the record. Well, it's just it's taken a minute. Just some shit happened. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> My mom passed away in Octo- on Friday the thirteenth in October, oh, and that was sort of like in you know, so uh, things just kind of rolled out as life happens. As life happens, yeah. And uh, I, I've had this album, you know, throughout the whole process, and it's like evolved and become a version of itself that I'm really, uh, I'm really proud of. So. Yeah, I, I don't want to go. Uh, I don't mean to take it to the dark place if you don't want to, but but that was that was sort of part of the story of the last record too, wasn't it? Was was your your father? My ex boyfriend mm-hmm. said to me when I started making this record, he's like, "Just be sure when you start talking about this record that you don't say." That it was you were you wrote it in the hardest period of your life. He's like, because you say that every single time. <laughs> I'm like, well, maybe it's true. <laughs> Whatever. Because the hardest period is always when you're right. Yeah. No, I'm, so, I'm sorry yes, to hear that. It was hard. Yeah. I'm, so, I'm really no, sorry to hear that. No, it, it. I think just art cycles, mm. and so does you know, just growing up. Right. Right. Well, I, I, I did get to hear a few of the songs, of course, on stage a minute ago. I, I don't know if that's represented the full album or not. Uh, obviously, I'm only getting a, a small slice. It, it does seem like a mellow record, if that's fair, uh, the songs I heard. I wouldn't say mellow. Yeah. Definitely not, like, spiritually mellow. Well, again, first listens, I'm never really able to k- always pick up on everything. You're just trying to... Gra- and it's live, and I was side stage on top of that. So it's like... Well, and it's new songs in a festival set yeah. before people know them. Right. Which is always, like, a tricky thing to do because you just want to play all your new shit because you think it's the dopest shit. <laughs> but, like, no one really wants to hear new songs in a live setting. I mean, I was able to sing along with... I don't remember now, but I was able to sing along with one of them by the end of it. So that was... That's oh. always nice. And there was something about South by Southwest, too. Oh, yeah. there. Uh, there's a song called Party Clown that's a... Faustian tale about South by Southwest. Uh, your own tale or someone else's? It's it's everyone's tale. Oh, okay. <laughs> We're just chasing our own tales. Because that's a, endlessly. Yeah, that's a mess. Over I'm ta- there, I'm so. chasing ta- tales. I'm chasing tales. Tail. <laughs> I'm trying tales. to figure out what that means. Tail. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> Chasing tail is different than chasing tails. I'm chasing. That should be my epitaph. Yeah. Uh, chasing tails. Chasing tails. <laughs> Z. Z. Always on there. So uh, mellow. I don't, I wouldn't say mellow. Okay. All right. But I'm deep in it. I don't know how to. I'll figure it out when I get there. It. No, and you didn't. Nor should hear you. That shit. I would love to. Get it out there, and I will. <laughs> I'm trying. Um, does on the line mean anything for this record? Is that something? Yeah, I've seen the hashtag around. There's a phone on stage. I think there's something in the pic- one of the pictures, I too. I that hashtag. You, well, is it for any reason? Am I sleuthing here, or just uh, is this a Sometimes dead end? Sometimes I just start shit from my Twitter, just for my own, uh-huh. to like help the process along. So, yeah, I was the one that made the on the line <laughs> hashtag. There, there aren't many... Retweets. But. <laughs> well, when we're looking to grasp at anything, suddenly it's like, it's a clue. And there's a phone on stage. Right. You're messing with our heads. I wish someone had called me up there tonight. That would have been so nice. <laughs> is, is, there, what, is that a rotary phone? Can someone... Yeah, I, I collect phones. I have for years. Yeah. Just like 
at antique malls. I get rotary phones. So I was like, oh, that maybe I'll just bring them on stage because they're just sitting in my house. And I, I do have a landline, so I use one of them. Still listed in the phone book? Uh, hope not. <laughs> All right, well, I'll, qu- I'll, I'll quit reaching here for the new album uh, as much until we can actually hear it. But I, I do want to ask about a, a few of the other things. So the most recent thing, of course, we heard from you was Nice as Fuck. It puts you back in a band environment. Um, I mean, well, sure I don't know if that's, that's fair to say because you have a band in your solo life. But did that, was that different? Was that, Oh yeah. you know? Oh, yeah, because Tennessee is one of my best friends. Mm. And uh, it, it happened really naturally and sweetly. I moved to New York, and she had a shop in the East Village called the Deep End Club. Mm -hmm. And I would just go there every day and hang out with her and just kind of loiter in her shop. And she's a great drummer, and her dad is also a great drummer, Pete Thomas. Mm -hmm. He plays with uh, Elvis Costello, Mm -hmm. has for many years. And so I kind of schemed a plan with Pete, her dad, to get her playing drums again because she had kind of taken a little break. So we set up a flat drum kit for her in her shop, and I got a mic, and then we asked our friend Erica to come and play bass with us, and we were just a shop band, and just kind of jamming in her shop, and then like people would wander in and like try to buy a t-shirt. <laughs> and she'd be like, oh, get out of here. <laughs> but, uh, so yeah, but then, you know, it was like a fully democratic uh, band experience, you know. Well, I, I'm gonna use that awesome. word. You said democratic because you made your live debut during the Republican National Convention, the R- RNC. I think it was on Colbert. At least that's the first time we saw you. And I thought, well, our first uh, actual show. So we wrote a bunch of songs in the shop, mm-hmm. and then my friend Matt Ward, M. Ward, mm-hmm. was in town, and I was like, "Come by the Deep End Club," and so he came over to just see us and say what's up, and saw us play our little pieces of songs, and he's like. I want you to open up for me on tour this summer or like in the like three months from then. And uh, so because Matt asked us, we had to get our shit together to make a record (laughs) and have stuff to play on tour opening for. So we opened for Matt, but we we made a pact to only play on the floor. So NAF always set up on the floor of the venue with the crowd around us oh, wow. and the crowd on the stage. Yeah. So opening for Matt, he let us set up on the floor and uh, yeah, pretty fun. That's cool. Well, yeah, then I, but that's yeah, what I was thinking is, oh, here they are a band born out of an era. And I guess I was tying that more to the, uh, the Colbert show and all that stuff. And I don't know, I, I just started looking at it and, and the timelines worked out with so many different things. I mean, beyond the, um, you know, the nicest fuck you put you in a band. I thought, you know, according to whatever notes I'm finding online, Rello Kylie's turning 20, which is the last band. And I don't know if that 20 means anything at this point or if that's really the date or anything like that. 20, yeah. 20, that means a lot. 98. That's crazy. Yeah. You, you're you the timekeeper. I didn't know. I like I anniversaries. Know 90, let me tell you. So 98. Time is somewhat irrelevant. In art? It will, or it's nonlinear. Yeah. We time travel a lot. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's sort of a different thing altogether but like rilo kylie is happening right now simultaneously (laughs) on another in another zone someone else in in the other simulation or the other level of (laughs) the game right it's still happening it's still happening or it's rehappening or something like that but 20 years is a long time yeah and yeah i don't know the significance except that i'm like 42 now (laughs) <laughs> well, there's a, such an accolade 32. that came out of that, yeah, because uh, Rolling Stone just named Portion for Foxes one of the greatest songs of the century. Why do you think I played it today? I heard it. Well, I didn't know that you always, I don't know that you always no. played it or not. No, I saw, I saw that thing. Someone tweeted it at yeah. me, and I was like, damn, that's so cool. So we learned it. I haven't really played that too much. I played it once with Blake from Rilo Kylie at Coachella. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah. I mean, I don't know. What, what is that? The news comes through. Does, again, lists are lists and, you know, and, and whatever. But, you know. There's not much activity over there. It's like I see it if it comes in. <laughs> I guess what I'm saying is <laughs> I it, see in it. the world that we play in, the sandbox that we play in, rock and roll. Yes. And the canon of rock and roll and the history and how we lift songs up, how we put songs on pedestals, artists on pedestals. This is talked about Y'all in like that lists. Sense. How can you love like, like lists? lists? You know what I mean? Like, people want to, like, make a list, and it's, like, very tidy. Yeah. This is the best of the best. But I'm what, sure you've got your Light songs. in the Attic? Light in the Attic. Just, uh, you know, records that weren't recognized mm-hmm. that are mm-hmm. fucking awesome. Like You're talking about the record label that yeah. puts all this stuff together? Yeah, yeah, just okay. those yeah. reissues. Mm-hmm. We're like, this is a genius record. No right. one heard it in 1973, but here you go, hipsters. 
<laughs> enjoy. And we you go eat hipsters. it up. It's like Ted Lucas. We're like, yes, yes. So I do, and I, I do so appreciate being on a list. That's yeah. so very nice. Yeah. It's a hell of a song. It's yes. still a great song. I thought it would feel young, like the angsty, you know, like that. But it really works for anything. It doesn't have to be like a romantic yeah. thing. Because I'm always rethinking when I'm performing stuff, like, what it means. Oh, yeah. you got to find the thing that, like, still is honest or something. And they change. Yeah. So that is surprisingly, it, it felt like, oh, okay. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I will bring up one more for the timekeeper then. Because uh, you said uh, Costello. It was 10 years ago that you and Costello traded, traded licks. You were on his record. He was on Acid Tongue. Acid Tongue turns 10. And what a great record that is because I got to go back and... I sort of just wanted to know what you remembered about about that because you, you see Fernando sounded great. It was like this looser, cool record with the idea of Silver Lake at its peak, the Brooklyn of the, the West Coast. You know, it was a thing happening. Yes, it was. And we were living in Silver Lake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was a really, really fun record to make. And I shot a documentary uh, or not a doc we just like shot everything we recorded so I have this documentary that I actually screened before my tour mm-hmm. during the acid tongue era like that was the opening act the making of the record but it was like too soon to see the making of the record and then like watch the band play <laughs> Well, it's a nice concept. I get it. Yeah, it's a cool but it, concept. I feel like now is it's more interesting to watch something that's ten years old. Yeah. So I'm hoping to um, put that out uh, at the ten year mark, which is soon, right? It's it's yeah, it's soon. It's, when is it? Like I don't. Do you know? I didn't. You do know that. all this. I didn't I do that know. far. You know? No, I didn't. I What's got the date, sir. <laughs> August twenty fourth. I don't know. When are we? <laughs> when are we? What is when today? Are we? Right now, uh, right now, uh, Rilo Kiley is playing in our backyard <laughs> forever right and ever. Right now, it's a Van Halen song. It's a, I like I like that song. I like that song gets shit on a lot. Wait, which one? Right now. Oh, why does right that... now? Right. Hey, that song's great. It's yeah, it's great. Nothing wrong with that song. Yeah, I'll tell that to anybody else. I'd, I guess Van Halen people, like, but my fucking yeah, Van Halen. Know. There's like way worse shit out there. There's that. Van the Halen's other one. great. <laughs> I mean, there's the Gary Sharon record. You can hear. Poor Gary Sharon. Um, Who's Gary Sharon? He was the third Van Halen singer. The oh. late '90s one. That's the one you hate on. Oh, is that the song? Rock no, rock no, that's 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 still the second one. But there oh. was another singer. It, I don't know what this. This is not going to make the airing. This is <laughs> why people want to hear this. <laughs> they probably do. They don't want to hear boring. No, dates. we'll keep it. <laughs> no offense. <laughs> <laughs> well, there went my entire. Thread, no. I do find myself on tour and playing festivals where people like to talk about tour dates and mm-hmm. stuff. Mm-hmm. And like the only conversation that happens is like, and then I was down in Houston and then we went up to, and then you're just like, oh God, please. I try not to ask that. I don't that care no. where I'm going. You know what I found interesting outside? Because it was uh, a lot of times in these, uh, the bands don't get the mix. They don't know each other or it's too hot and they all stay in their trailers or whatever. But it was uh, the folks from the War on Drugs and His Golden Messenger. and Phil uh, Cook. Uh, Phil Cook was out there. Yeah, I he's saw Phil. so cool. Yeah, Phil's got a new single out, new record, I guess. Oh, but, uh, he's great. But they were all out there. And, uh, and, uh, and Adam from War on Drugs walks up and, and he's talking with uh, the lead singer, His Golden Messenger. I'm dropping his name. It's, it's initials. But he, first thing he says, like, hey, man. So when are you going to make a new record? And I thought, man, that's the questions I ask. And they're asking that. And I don't feel so bad now because I always feel like, a, you know, it's, like, oh, it's the music talk. But it's what I always appreciate about you because the last time we talked, you sort of... Uh, Spilled the beans? No. Surely? No, you're, you're good about pushing me away from the usual... We were talking about, and I don't think we ever finished this, about what happens in your late 30s when you sort of go a little bit crazy. You sort of... What happens in your early 40s when you are still going a little crazy. Um, you're only a couple, you're a few years ahead of me. You're only three or four years ahead of me. So it's, uh, I, I always, I, I'm asking you, you know, that's, that's what I was doing. I was, I was like, what, what, what's going to happen to me <laughs> in like three years? I would say one thing. The road narrows. It's a riddle? No, no. It's just, it just narrows. There are like less things yeah. that work. It's like, you, I think, have to be on somewhat of a spiritual quest in order to be happy, right? Like, I feel like 
alcohol like stuff works but it doesn't like right. fully work so you got to be in the mode of like working on shit how's it Helping going out a little bit just a little bit is this too hippy dippy no it's not at all because I, I what i was thinking is you know you've got a um you know you're in, you're in sort of a lifestyle that allows you time i guess there's a luxury of time what you do with that time is sort of up to you because there's a lot of waiting around and and I don't know, you know, there's the between albums thing where you're not on tour. You know, what are you doing with your inner personal life? Oh, nothing. How are you doing Just to make you feel, feel better? You know, what are you? <laughs> no discipline. <laughs> That's what I'm getting that though. I mean, I, I see what you mean because you know, if if you've only got so many choices, those it, to me it would seem like those are the moments that you get to. Well, and I think the road narrows the older you get, and you just, you know, you kind of have to deal with stuff, right? I'll, I don't know. I'll, I'll let you know you that know? you're right when I get there. You know, and, and at this point, you'll see. Sure. Oh, <laughs> I trust see. you. All right. I can't wait to hear the actual studio versions of this record. I really can't. I'm looking I so forward to it. I wouldn't call it mellow, okay? I won't call it mellow. Until you hear it. And then if you think it's mellow, that's cool. It's unfair. I just heard some songs up there. I shouldn't. I have. mean, it's not like sleep, the ba- you know, it's not like metal. I see what that I've, I've struck a nerve just, like, with go, the word mellow. No. <laughs> oh, shit. Maybe it is fucking mellow. Maybe it's not. I don't know. Maybe it is. Maybe it is. Maybe it is, Kyle. What's Maybe wrong it is with mellow. it? Yeah, what's wrong with mellow? Right. If it's a good song, it's a good song, right? Yeah, what's my problem with mellow? What's your problem with Why mellow? Why am I insecure about mellow? Yeah. What are you afraid of? It's like, oh, what a nice mellow record this is. I think it's easier to rock and, like, it's easier. It's like a go-to thing to rock because you can like fill the space with noise and sure. like at a festival especially like you rock rock rock. But we did one song today from Rabbit for Coat, that song Happy, mm-hmm. so mellow. So mellow. And yeah. I feel like it was such a nice respite. Yeah. But it is difficult as a live performing artist just to like a live performing artist. That sounds so pretentious. <laughs> just playing shows. It, to balance like the mellow with the rockers. I mean, it worked out there. I have a hang up about it. <laughs> you gotta, it struck a nerve. We'll see. We'll see when it gets here. I mean, I don't think Party Clown is mellow, but. <laughs> I mean. Well, since you don't know the or definition won't tell of me mellow. when this will be out, I'll know when it happens. That's fine. You yeah. know, so, so that's cool. All right, that's it. We're good. Bye. I got nothing else. A big old thanks to Jenny Lewis for that conversation right there. Very much looking forward to the new record. Uh, don't forget, subscribe to Consequence of Sound's YouTube channel to keep up with your favorite artists and interviews. Uh, for you podcast fans, iTunes, Podchaser, or wherever you get your podcasts from, uh, go ahead and leave a rating and a review as well. And then head over to WFPK.org. That's where you'll hear me do a show every Monday through Thursday from noon to 3 Eastern. You'll also find some bonus episodes of this series over there as well. I'm Kyle Meredith. I'll see you next time. Consequence Podcast Network.